right. And that was it. Thank you, man. Yeah, oh, my shit. pleasure. Thank well you. Done. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for driving up and, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know what possessed you, but that's okay. <laughs>
and 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 it's best to go look out there and 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 connect the dots and 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 plug into the roots where it all comes from it just makes people in america that much more better mm -hmm. that much more worldly that much more panoramic in their view okay. and so it's very important that mm -hmm. uh, this happens and and i'm glad that uh, the efforts of Ravi Shankar, mm -hmm. a great mm -hmm. man, uh, and, and and the guy who drummed with him for all those 30 years was my father. Your father, mm -hmm. yes. And, and so they collectively made it possible for people to look at India in a different way. Mm -hmm. And and now it has, of course, become Bollywood and, and uh, you know, all the business people and, mm -hmm. and the Ambani's and this and that and everything. And, and um, the guy built uh, the, rich, the, the most expensive house in the world, a billion dollar house. In, in Mumbai. A billion dollar house. A billion dollar house in Mumbai. A wow. billion dollar house. You Mumbai. bought that house? No, I didn't. Yourself? <laughs> I, actually, I actually, I can't wait to see it. I drove by it and felt, um, you know, rich for a second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah when you're, when you're, when you're driving by it, it gave me the aura of, oh, yeah, of the wealth. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 you know, it, I soaked it in. Yeah. And, and then went home and looked at my place and it all kind of. That's disappeared, but that's, that that's how it happened. Yeah. So, but anyway, so there it is. In, in your question, answer to your question, yes, in America should look at uh, the world out there, not through how much money they have, mm -hmm. yeah. what kind of armies they have, how many times they've sent rockets to the moon or whatever, mm -hmm. but what culture they represent, what yes, their tradition absolutely. is, and and and, and so uh, the human uh, 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 humanness of that place. That's great. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm not a musician. He is a musician. That's your problem. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, but Can't we've, we've seen quite a few of your videos now, and um, what I'm actually astonished by is the fact that I know you say that you, uh, when you, you, in Indian music, it's very spontaneous mm -hmm. uh, the way you're playing. It doesn't look like you're thinking at all when you're playing. Okay. Yeah, is is that is that the case? Is it kind of just your hands do whatever they what they want? Well, or I, tell, I tell you, I'm sweating buckets while I'm playing. You know, mm -hmm. it's like God. I hope I get this right. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Really? Oh yeah. Is, is that your, you know, while you're while you're performing? That's while in your, you're performing. Interesting. And, and huh. what, what's interesting about improvising is that when you come up with a thought, a new thought, and you put it into action, and it's a simple, say it's a simple idea, mm -hmm. and and you play it, the the fun thing is that you can hover around it for a little bit until something new strikes you. Mm -hmm. mm. And then when it strikes you, insert that in. So that's the fun about improv, but when you're playing a, a, a song that is, that ha that is corralled and play, you know, into you know, being a certain way, and, and there's only very little place for you to be able to be creative, uh, mm. you don't have much time to be able to uh, make things happen. So uh, that's when uh, uh, things go a little awry for you. I mean, when I play with Bela Fleck and Edgar Meyer and these people we are playing tonight, uh, uh, we have a, a, a you know a bit organized arrangement for the songs, and there's very few little pockets in and there where you can just go and and do your and do your thing and talk to thing. each other and yeah yeah and 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 in that you better have your your you know your files in the right order, mm. and, you know, yeah. like the memory chip properly cleaned and <laughs> freshened and, you know, rebooted. Yeah. If not, then you're in trouble. Yeah. Well, it's very <laughs> impressive because it looks like it's just done with ease and like the second nature. Oh, oh yeah, we're switching. smiling yeah. and everything and you're like, I got this. You know, Facing you know, yeah. Hey, I know oh, yeah. what I'm doing. But in the meantime, I wish this comes through properly. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because uh, the last one we were watching, I the last video we saw of you playing, mm. my I had two thoughts, and the first one was you're you're an artist who seems like from intuition to application, it's just sometimes, like you said, there's not even a thought process. It's just intuition to application. Well, I mean, when you've been doing things for this long, sure. I mean, I've been playing professionally for about what 53 54 years yeah yeah and you've gone through every possible combination and permutation right musically speaking and have played with so many zillions of musicians so their thought process have lined up inside of you mm -hmm. uh, so um, it is possible for me to uh, be more uh, more what should I say impulsive yeah, it is absolutely possible. I mean, I can take the leap of faith, just jump right down and right. And, and hope I land on my feet. Right. <clears throat> if I don't, because I've been doing it for so long, uh, it is possible for me to bank and and and, and glide. Make into, a correction. And yeah. Make corrections and, and and to make corrections, I can uh, you know just grab on to tried and true. 
Mm -hmm. You know, there's like a 500 different things that have been done before, mm -hmm. and and they're all there, ready, and 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 will right. You got the tool, will kind toolbox. of relate to stuff that you're doing. You just pick on that and yeah. hang on for dear life, like life jacket. You know, yeah, and, and it works. <laughs> yeah, well, you 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 are for me. I've never witnessed a person who has such mastery over an instrument at the level that you do. We've made comparisons to our exposure to, to instrumental mastery that we've watched people, uh, like with the electric guitar, or, yeah, yeah. or people who can master the Stevie piano, Ray Stevie Ray Vaughan, yeah. Jimi yeah. Hendrix, yeah. Uh, some of the classical cellists and everybody else. I've, I've not witnessed anybody who, from my perception, had greater mastery over an instrument, even dancers and their instruments, than what I've watched from well, you. Well, not to get serious about it, but I mean, it's a relationship with your instrument. Mm. That, that's what it is. I mean, in India, we definitely believe that each instrument uh, has a relationship with the instrumentor. Hmm. <coughs> it's clear when you're playing. Uh, and, it's very uh, clear. But it's not a relationship of me, master, you, uh, horse, and I command you. Right. There is a spirit inside of the instrument. Mm. We definitely believe so. Mm -hmm. And and what you end up doing for the first 15, 20 years of your life is trying to establish a relationship with that instrument. Wow, what a great statement. And, and, and when you do that, uh, uh, the instrument is ready to, um, uh, you know, do your bidding. Yeah. Because yeah. your friends, your brothers, uh. your husband and wife, you're whatever you are, and your relationship with it. And that's why you see so many musicians traveling and they're so careful with their instrument. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that it's okay, it's packed right, and it's, you know, it's, you know, all that. And, and it's simply because uh, it's, half of it is me, half of it is the instrument. Yeah. If it decides to not respond today, I'm dead in water. Right. I have no idea where I'm going. I'll, right. I'll, the creek with pedal, no <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, uh, and uh, so that is what uh, I believe happens. And and when I'm playing with uh, playing on stage, uh, I I am totally convinced that I'm not going to be uh, hung out to dry by my instrument. The spirit there. Yeah. That you know it'll come to my rescue, uh, rescue if it needed. So I'm I'm happy to just jump into any kind of fray, move in any kind of area, jump down the waterfall, whatever. You know, or take take a flight. Yeah, um, and it, it's fine. Is is tabla something you think anyone could could play, or should they have a natural affinity or giftedness toward it? Do you personally think tabla as a traditional instrument from India, mm -hmm. it, uh, playing all the traditional repertoire and stuff, not so easy. Mm -hmm. But as a percussion instrument, yes, anybody can play it. Yeah, it's like a tabla player like me can play bongos. Right. Or play congos, you know, and because right, they all have a relationship and percussion. Relationship. Right. So in that sense, you can take all that technique and just transpose it onto the tabla, because it's a percussion instrument. And so I always tell people, don't get you know riled up because I mean you know you, <laughs> your whole you like two thousand year old history. Yeah, I was going to play. I need to sound like just like get the same. Drum and, and just kind of you know yeah. find your way. I mean you don't know how to play piano, but you can get up there and hit the key of C. And you know, and you hit a couple of notes, and it kind of sounds right. You know what the notes are. You can hit them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So same great thing comparison with, with tabla. So yes, uh, but to play the repertoire, then you need to get some information inside of you. Yeah. And and, and that needs to happen. Uh, anything about tabla, its history, its uh, repertoire, and all that stuff can be learned in a couple of years, but to be able to practice, get it to up up to specs. To the point where you can actually do something with it, mm -hmm. that may take some time. So I would imagine yeah. it's thousands of hours of work. Yeah, 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 I'm still working on some stuff. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Uh, this is from Tashar. He says, now that you are considered a master of the art form, what are you hoping to achieve with your artistry and your influence? But that's the problem. Everybody thinks I'm a master. I don't. And, mm. and that makes things easier for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely it would. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like I'm down here, you guys think I'm up there, but no, I still got a ways to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the thing, my father always told me, don't try to be a master, just try to be a good student, and you'll get by just fine. Great and, and, and when it comes to art and culture uh, and, and creativity, all you could be is a student, because there's every day something new to learn. I mean, it's like you guys found out about tabla and all this Indian stuff mm -hmm. just recently. Just recently, mm -hmm. yep. yeah. I mean, so it's new, and, and, and you just found out about banjo coming from Africa. Mm -hmm. Right, just right. a couple like, minutes ago, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just freshly arrived. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, be, 
I mean, people think I'm a master, but I really don't. I have a lot to learn. I mean, uh, there's some wise men who said that uh, when, when he was uh, told a great musician, uh, uh, Maestro, you were perfect today. And he said, Fred, I haven't played good enough to quit yet. Hmm. And that's a profound statement. That's a very because, profound I mean, statement. If you think you've done the best you can, you might as well hang up your boots yeah. and you're done with it. Right. So it's never the best. Mm -hmm. It's always striving for the best. Yeah. So that's what you can be best for today, but tomorrow you listen to it and say, mm, I could have done that better. Yeah. So yeah, and so I just feel that I'm learning. And that's what drives so many musicians to wanting to learn more. I mean, when George Harrison sells millions and millions of records, he still feels he needs to learn more and expand his horizons. Mm -hmm. and, and so he goes to Ravi Shankar to study sitar. Right. He doesn't need to, right. but the thirst to learn more and make himself that much more better and converse a little bit more uh, in different languages on his instrument brings mm -hmm. him there, John McLaughlin, same thing, Charles Lloyd, mm -hmm. same thing, John Coltrane, mm -hmm. same thing, all these people you know, they feel the need to learn more. And, and so they are, they, they, they'll be the first to tell you they're not masters, they're just students. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's what all of us are. And as long as we keep that in our head and in our minds, things are not as daunting. Mm -hmm. uh, when you, if you start to believe that everybody thinks you're a master and you're a master, you, you're like compelled, you know, you're like forced to be able to see it, say something or play something profound every time. Right, yeah. And and you're like, okay, I'm not gonna wanna fall flat on my face today, but right. But you can, and if you're, not, if you're just learning and going forward. And, and so that may be a cop out to some people, but that's what it is, it's a fact. I think I know the answer to this question, but I, I don't wanna presume. Okay. Of these options, Composing, mm -hmm. recording, mm -hmm. performing. Mm -hmm. Do you have one that's a preference bar none that you like the most, or are they equal? What's your answer? <clears throat> I would, my guess would be performing, would be doing. Uh, your guess is correct. All performing, right. Performing is it's easiest. Yeah, that would be, I would imagine, and easiest done, I would guess the most rewarding because of the experience being so organic and in the moment with the people they're appreciating. Yeah, I mean, you know, but artists are vain. Mm -hmm. True, <laughs> yeah. The applause is nice. We have, we have only a little bit of ego. Yeah. <laughs> just, a, just a little just bit of ego. Just a little bit of ego. <laughs> not me. Not you. Not yeah, him at all. Of course me. not. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Like Appreciate that. Uh, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we all want to be appreciated. We all want to be loved. We enjoy a little bit of applause and everything is there. So, yes, for me, performing Indian music, that's the fun part, simply because it's something I grew up with, it's home, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a comfort zone, so it's great to be able to do that. When I get into, uh, uh, you know, on the stage with, say, Herbie Hancock, or with John McLaughlin, or Bela Fleck at Gemeiner and all these guys, or with a symphony orchestra, it's very challenging, because now I got to step out of that garb that I'm yeah. wearing as an Indian and, and do these other things and, 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 and so wear these other hats and therefore be subjected to the rules mm -hmm. that those things bring to you. Right. And so that's more challenging or composing for a film is challenging because you know, you're know you now responsible for putting into play and, and bringing to blossom uh, someone else's idea and right. thought as a right. music composer. And, and so those challenges are there. And so, yes, performing and performing, especially Indian music, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, as a uh, American who loves classic rock, uh, this is just a uh, uh -huh. curiosity. Uh, mm -hmm. Were there any Western musicians that inspired you growing up or who, who were your favorite people to listen to? Well, I used to walk around with my, with, uh, with my boom box. Mm -hmm. on, on Heck yeah, you did. In, in, <laughs> on the streets of Bombay listening to Come On Baby, Light My Fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was listening to The Doors. I was listening to The Grateful Dead. I was mm. listening to Jefferson Starship. Yes. Quicksilver Messenger Service with John Cipollino, the guitarist. I don't I mean, even know that one. I don't even know that one. See? Yeah. <laughs> There's something new. Right. There's something new every day. <laughs> I was listening to all those guys. I was listening to Miles. I was listening mm -hmm. to you know, and and so yeah. So I, genre, not just where you no, were no, all no, over. But the, but there was one period where it was just rock and rock roll. Rock and roll. Yeah. It was uh, you know like uh, your Big Brother and the Holding Company. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was listening to Janis Joplin. Oh. I was, you know yeah. Jimmy, of course. Yeah. Ah, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to Jimmy and and all these guys. I mean, that was uh, that was an interesting. Uh, 
uh, eardrum popping moment in my life. Yeah. I have to say, you know, boombox right there. I had, I was the only one in the neighborhood who had a boombox. Really? First of all. And then here I'm walking down the street playing the boombox boxes, t distorting uh -huh. because it's small. Yeah, it's little one. Big. But you've got and, it up yeah, there. Yeah, got it up here. Yeah. And, and, and the Hammond organ is going. And people are looking at me strange, like, what's wrong with this kid? Yeah, and you didn't care. <laughs> you were just... Why is he listening to Lata Mangeshka? And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Happy, what's going on? And all those guys, he's listening to, what's this? You know, this mm -hmm. noise. Anyway, uh, uh, but that's absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I mean, rock was uh, at one point, uh, uh, you know, a very, uh, a very special moment in my life. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I have to say, I wanted to play drums. I did want to play drums. Mm. And like being a rock band? Being a rock band, you yeah. know. Do you have an opinion drums. of who the, the greatest oh. drummer of all time is? Who is the greatest? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends on, you mean rock and roll? Let's say rock, rock, rock and roll, roll. Like just, rock and roll drummer. What I would know. Oh my God, I saw I know, it's you tough. know Ainsley Dunbar? Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do you know Ginger Baker? Yes. Okay, these these are guys Yes. Love. You know, Ginger Baker is mm -hmm. like, you know. He just yeah, passed away. God yeah, if you mention those are names that are always mentioned at the top of top yeah, of the list. Stuart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these are guys. I mean, you know, there was one movie that came out called Kaleidoscope. Mm -hmm. It was a movie called Kaleidoscope. You know yeah, okay. I didn't see. And that I think one. Ainsley Dunbar was the one who did the score for it. Huh? It I was see a this. very psychedelic score, but the drums were like very special in there. Yeah. Did you see the Did you see the film recently, Whiplash? Yeah, did I you did. See yeah, that I one? Did. Yeah, I yeah. Did, did you did. enjoy that one? I thought the movie was good. Uh, all the jazz people were thinking that you know the jazz world is not properly mm. presented. Oh, right, like, that, that's uh, not the way. Yeah, in, in that sense. Uh, but but uh, yeah, I mean, but it wasn't about really jazz. It's about mm -hmm. these two characters. Yeah, exactly. And 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 if if you got past the jazz thing, then you really enjoy the movie. And and uh, someone pointed that out to me because I was thinking the same thing that oh. Uh, but no, it's about that story. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, it's a great movie. Uh, the score is great, but the score with the Birdman. Mm. Yes. Now, the, the score to Birdman? That was one yeah. of the best films in well, a long time the, for us. one of the best film Heck scores yes. I ever heard. Yes. And you know who did it? was my pal Antonio Sanchez. I did not know that. Now you know that. Yeah. <laughs> learning again, learning so much new today. Every day. <laughs> Antonio Sanchez is really one of the great drummers of our time. Yeah. Mm. He... Of course, the, the, the director of the movie is a man from Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so yep. it was Antonio Sanchez and, and Antonio Was he actually movie. on the kit in those shots when they went through? There, yes, he is. That on was the actually kit. him? Oh, that was him on the kit? Yeah. Okay. And, and he, at the Oscars, he played it. But okay. of course, he, it wasn't the, uh, the, the, the score wasn't, uh, did not qualify to be, uh, you know, chosen. Mm. Uh, but in, uh, in all other, you know, Fe uh, festivals or something it won, yeah, but not at the Oscar. But it really, really a great score. One of the best use oh. of drums that I ever saw. That's, uh, one, of, that's one of our favorite. We films. love that film. Love that film. And Michael Keaton was good, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. We just everything about that. Film that's one of our favorite us. films. Yeah. Love. We left the theater all three when that movie was over. We're like, okay, so that was the best picture of the year. Yeah, <laughs> and it was. It? it was. It was. <laughs> Is uh, you've collaborated with obviously a, a ton of people. Is there anybody that you haven't collaborated with, Western or Indian, that you, you'd like to collaborate? Well, with? Well, apart from the fact that I'm still uh, trying to get better and better with the collaborations that I am in, mm -hmm. because the more you play with them, the more you get to know them, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and things open up and reveal themselves, and and the conversation gets deeper and more words appear and all that. So. I'm still playing with John McLaughlin 40 years down the road. I'm still now making a record with Mickey Hart of the Grateful Dead. We've been working so long and, and I'm still uh, uh, working with a lot of Indian musicians that I've been working since like 35, 40 years. Yeah. And, and the relationship just blossoms further and further and further. But yeah, I mean, there are a lot of different... I just recently um, started working with symphony orchestras. Mm. And I was commissioned to write a tabla concerto. We heard about that, yeah, which is like, that's never been done, has that's it? That's never been done. Yeah. So I wrote one and, and then it started performing. And the last time it was done in Florence and Zubin Mehta, the great conductor, yes. conducted it. Ah. And, and it was great to have that honor. It was just fabulous. So that's a new challenge for me that's uh, come forth. And uh, uh, in the last five or six years, I've, I've you know, kind of, you know, 
came back to working with Herbie Hancock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, uh, I mean, we kind of crossed paths in the 70s. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Either. Yeah, well, in the 70s, you know, in those days, um, there were big festivals that took place in Europe, all over. And so bands from here, mostly jazz bands, went to Europe and spent like two months there, touring oh. and playing all over the place. And what the promoters used to do is like they would line up three bands or four bands, book an airplane okay. with all those, and fly them from place to place to place to place, right. and, and uh, have them play in festivals, you know, one right. day of those four bands. Right. And so, uh, what, one of those four bands was us. Our band was called Shakti with John McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. And then there was Herbie Hancock's band. Okay. Then there was a band called Weather Report. Uh, it was a band with uh, Joe Zavinol and Wayne Shorter and Jaco Pastorius, and based, one of the top bands of that time, Weather Report. And the other one was uh, a, a band called uh, 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 a Billy Cobham George Duke Band. And, and these were the four bands that traveled at the same time. And, and, and we would just be opening for each other. And, and sometimes there were others that would join us, like certain days it would be Carlos Santana's band would, would come in. And, oh, just, got, yeah, just so, people like that. That's yeah, awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> so one band is playing, and while we are in the back, like playing ping pong, and yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, food is being cooked, and you know, all that yeah. kind of stuff would happen. But so at that time, I did some work uh, uh, with Herbie and stuff. But recently, we got together again, and we started like four or five years ago, we did a couple of tours. And now Herbie's new record, I, I got a chance to be able to put some stuff on it. So that's happening. So awesome. I'm really looking forward to seeing awesome. where that goes and, and what that spawns. Yeah. And so, so yeah, I mean, I'm really into it. And this Vela Fleck, Edgar Meyer thing is new. Yeah. So we're, we're, we only we're, had we're one so record. We're very looking forward to hearing it. So, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, to finish uh, up the round yeah, quick we, and then let Yeah, we the have a... Uh, you have a... We have uh, lightning rapid, rapid fire. Rapid questions. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. so just uh, right off the top, there are going to be some silly ones. So, yes. sorry. Okay. Uh, favorite musician today? Me. Yes, great. <laughs> favorite Indian actor? Me. Oh, yes. What's you that? know, I've acted in movies. You what? Know Where? What's the matter for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know this. Hey, what's the matter for you? <laughs> Come on. Favorite uh, favorite Indian film besides the one you're in? Yeah. Uh, favorite Indian film? Uh, a, a comedy called Padosan. Okay, we got to watch that. Got to watch yeah. that. That's one. never been. No, it's never Suggested. been. Suggested. All the actors in the movie are uh, comedians. Okay, we'll look yeah, it up. It's, we got to look it up. It's a great comedy. One of the best comedies. Stupid babies ever. have not. No, it's their fault. Okay. <laughs> uh, Favorite American actor? Uh, favorite American actor or, would or have British, been. Western, yeah, Western, Western actor. Oh, Western actor. Yeah. I would. Uh, I don't know, but I mean, I think I would probably have to go with. Uh, uh, what's his name? Oh my God. Cor Corbin Miles. Miles. Huh? That's, that's me. That's him. It's okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> That was a fantastic dance. <laughs> that was dance. great. Dance. That was okay, great. now the, the the thing is, uh, actors. I mean, male and female are both kind of considered actors. Yeah, yeah, 100%. no, no, percent. Male or female? Male or female. female. Okay, the Meryl Streep. There you go. Yeah, that's fantastic. Rock and roll. Favorite American film. Uh, favorite American feel, film would have to be Wuthering Heights. Ooh, oh, great call. My wife's in love with you. Okay, <laughs> biggest pet peeve. <laughs> huh? Biggest pet peeve. Something that annoys you. It's like a big. Something that annoys yeah. you. Yeah. How many clip in their nails or? Uh, actually, what annoys me is uh, we uh, mm. uh, <laughs> potholes on the road. Welcome to LA. LA. <laughs> uh, totally agree with you. Uh, coffee or chai? Coffee. Hey. Although I sold chai. You sold chai? Did you? Yeah, for 20 years I sold Taj Mahal tea on, on television. We didn't do enough research. Did ads. Yeah, no. <laughs> and, 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 and. <laughs> The guy who's doing all sorts of things, okay? Did, you didn't. I did ads for TV ads. Did you do any ads for Hajmola? Because that's been really big for us. Yeah. The who? Hajmola. Hajmola. I actually did one. Did you did really? You really? Yeah, there was an ad that uh, I was sitting and, and in an airplane, and, and this lady was sitting next to me and saying, uh, Are you Saki Hussein's younger brother? <laughs> Because I mean, I'm supposed to have a Hajmola and I'm supposed to be, you know, mm -hmm. you know uh -huh. so, uh, so. Wow, so, I gotta find that. We do. So I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You said, oh, you look so young. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's great. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, uh, you go ahead. Uh, the favorite thing about touring? 
Uh, food. Awesome, good. Okay, least favorite thing about touring? Uh, cold food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, food that's like not prepared. Yeah. <laughs> What's an instrument you wish you could play? Uh, God, um, actually, I really love to play the tabla. I think this is the best instrument that I can. You know, there used to be somebody uh, who would ask a piano, a great piano player, uh, you know, that, okay, if you were to not play piano, which instrument would you play? Mm -hmm. And he said tabla. And he was asked why. He said, "Well, because he thinks that he's one. Of, it's one of the most complete instrument uh, it is an amazing out instrument. there in the world. It is an amazing yeah, instrument. Yeah, but I would like to be able to reverse that thought and be able to play the piano. Huh. I can play a little bit, but I was going to say the composition. You can teach yeah. each other. Yeah, he plays piano. Oh my God! So I'm there not, you go. I write. I write. <laughs> yeah, I was say you write stuff with piano. So yeah, mm -hmm. but it's like. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, I get this. Yeah, but Sibelius helps. Yeah, and last question of this round. What's the hardest thing about playing tabla? There's no hard thing about playing tabla. It's all joy and happiness. That's beautiful. That's great. That's great. Thank you so um, much. We really appreciate you, you uh, allowing much. us to uh, sit down yeah, and talk with pleasure. you. And we thank really... you for buying a new shirt. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> That's actually a running joke. It is a channel. running joke. <laughs> it, was, it was picked out by Antonio. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we very much look yeah, forward to uh, listening to your concert. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming by.